using this under the Fair Use Act, and I want to do another video on this because Jonathan Kahn has plagiarized the material out of my two books, and worst of all, he's butchered it. He butchered the material in my book and the teachings and all the ancient teachings that I've gave in my book, which creates confusion understand that all he's done is create confusion so I'm going to teach and show the things that he got wrong and the reason he he's done this because he does not know this material himself understand that that's why he butchers it twists it and and that's another part of this why I'm doing this because he's twisted it around and this is a well-known strategy that plagiarists use they try to twist things around uh, hoping that they can uh, avert themselves from uh, or try to skate around the copyright laws of somebody else's material. So I'm going to reteach this as it relates to my books that he stole this material from. So in his book, he has a whole section on the destroyer. Well, the destroyer in the Bible is... Apollyon, and we're going to get to that. So let's let's go through some of this, and I'm going to play part of what he is talking about that's in his book. Understand that that is only stolen copyrighted material from my book. And that's exactly what happened at the end of the 1960s. This one returns. The spirit comes into America, dark spirit. And now. So he's talking about the dark spirit and as it relates to abortion and the Supreme Court of the United States. And you can see this was February 9th, 2023. And it's the mystery of the destroyer as it relates to the Supreme Court. Watch that again, and you can see what he's talking about, or showing in his little quick clip video about his book, promoting his book. Expect the destroyer to come. And that's exactly what happened. At the end of the 1960s, this one returns. The spirit comes into America, dark spirit. And now... Abortion in the Supreme Court of the United States. And the Supreme Court's acronym name is SCOTUS. Well, SCOTUS was a well-known demon of darkness. It was an ancient pagan god that was well-known by the ancient Romans and the ancient Egyptians, and it caused the fall of their empires. As a matter of fact, SCOTUS which was also known as Erebus and the nine gods of Anid was the ninth plague of Egypt from the Bible. That was the ninth plague of Egypt. And I did the research and put that in my book. You can find it in my books. Did all of that research for people that he has turned around and butchered. The Bible says behind the gods of the ancient world were spirits called the Shadim in Hebrew. The word Shadim comes from a root word that means to destroy. They were the So what he's just done there, that's part of his book. He's tried to tell his audience that it comes from the, the Shadim, which is a Hebrew word. It is not a Hebrew word. Jonathan Kahn, the dummy, the dummy, and the uneducated. Shadim is actually a Canaanite word. The Hebrew word for that is Shadu. The Canaanite word is Shadim. Jonathan Kahn is a dummy, uneducated dummy that only knows how to plagiarize somebody's work that they've done and come up. See, in literary terms, in literature, and you can fact check this, people who are uneducated and don't really know what they're talking about will go in and plagiarize somebody's work and then add what's called jargon. This is a well-known term that anybody can look up. They'll go in and add jargon, J-A-R-G-O-N, in attempts to skate around copyright laws. That's all he's done. 
Shadim, and this is the point. This is the point behind this. He actually creates more confusion by stealing and twisting all of this stuff up because he teaches things that are not true. Shadim does, is not a Hebrew word and does not mean destroyer. Has nothing to do with destruction. Has nothing to do with destroyer. And is not a Hebrew word. It is an ancient Canaanite word. Shadu, Jonathan Khan, would be the word you'd be searching for. But, of course, you're not educated. You're not studied in these things as I am. The Bible says, Behind the gods of the ancient world were spirits called the Shadim in Hebrew. The word Shadim comes from a root word that means to destroy. They were the no, it does not, Jonathan. And you have created confusion by stealing and twisting these things around is what you've done. So, here's the important part. His videos and in his book he says that the destroyer is coming. He says it is coming, whereas in my books I show that the destroyer, who is Apollyon from the Bible, is already here. The destroyer is in fact already here. The destroyer, Apollyon, has been here for quite some time, and I'm going to unequivocally prove that, and have already unequivocally proven that in my two books. The gods will come back, the same gods. So now the third of the Dark Trinity, the destroyer, also known as Molech, will come back, will come to America and to the West. So he says that it will come back. The destroyer, which he uh, appoints and assigns the name Molech. He gives that destroyer, he assigns the word Molech to it. Listen to it again. The gods will come back, the same gods. So now the third of the dark trinity, the destroyer, also known as Molech, will come back will come to America and to the West. So let me show you what he's done or attempted to do again. His only hopes was to try to skate around the copyright laws and it's failed. It's absolutely failed because I'm so well studied. So <clears throat> Abaddon from Revelation 9-11 is the destroyer and anybody can look that up. There it is who is also has the name Apollyon, that means the destroyer, all in my two books. I put all of this material in my two books. Abaddon from Revelation 9, verse 11, who is also hath the Greek name Apollyon, is the destroyer. Anybody can look that up, and that's why I put it in my books. And here is the chapter and verse, Revelation 9, 11, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon, the destroyer. And what Jonathan Kahn did in attempts to skate around the copyright laws, which did not work, is he gives that... Uh, he gives that deity the name Moloch, and this is where you find that. It only means king. That's all he has done. He has given it a Hebrew name, a Greek and Hebrew name, which means king. That's all Moloch means, is king. And they had a king, a Moloch, over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon, the destroyer. Apollyon, the destroyer. Molech, the king, the Molech, whose name is Apollyon, the destroyer. Every bit of it's in my two books. Every single bit of this is in my two books. And all he's done was try to skate around copyright laws. And it didn't work, because anybody can look this up. You can look all this information up for yourself very easily. Very, very easily. Moloch simply means king, and 
that's right there in the verse 911 that is all well explained in my book that's the point I show these things and give it the accurate name which is Abaddon and Apollyon the destroyer that's in my book the king is a mullet that's all the king is is the Hebrew word for king He's just tried, and it's it was a pitiful attempt at best, a pitiful attempt at best to try to skate around copyright laws. So, what I argue in my book is that Apollyon is already here. These pagan gods have already returned to America, and what you're looking at here is a picture of the front of the Supreme Court of the United States building. And that is a reconstruction, that is what that building looks at like, and that is a reconstruction of the Temple of Apollyon. That is only a reconstruction of the Temple of Apollyon, all the stuff from my book. And this is an ancient drawing of the Temple of Apollyon. There it is. You can see it for yourself. In my book, I show that these gods, these ancient pagan gods, are already here and well at work. Well at work, have been well at work through the laws that were passed in the 1960s and the 1970s. All in my book. All in my books. That's actually discussed in my book, Wormwood. I think around page 44, I, I begin talking about this with the Supreme Court of the United States and the abortion laws taking uh, these laws it began with taking the Bible out of school and prayer out of school in the 1960s then it started with then it went to abortion in the 1970s before that abortion was decided by the church leaders by the priest and the church leaders and you can look that up in Numbers chapter 5 verses 11 through 31 but then the church allowed and mankind people didn't want the church to decide those matters anymore and put it in the hands of Scotus that ancient demon of darkness Scotus the Supreme Court of the United States they handed that power over to the temple to Apollyon that is his temple that is the temple of Apollyon, who is already here. Supreme Court of the United States, that demon of darkness, Scotus, operates in the temple of Apollyon. There it is. There's the pictures. There's the ancient pictures that they have on record of what the temple of Apollyon looked like. I mean, it's a remnant of what it used to be, and it's in Delphi or some people pronounce it Delphi. It's a remnant of what it used to be, but they know exactly what that temple looked like because they have drawings. They found uh, ancient artifacts with what it looked like. That is what it looked like, and that is the Supreme Court of the United States building where the ancient demon of darkness, because, you know, he talks about, Jonathan talks about, the dark trinity and the destroyer Apollyon is one of those dark trinities one of those three it's all in my books all in my books that he stole from it comes out of this book where I discuss Apollyon more in this book titled the mark of the beast is already in your hand your eyes see it without seeing it he stole that material from this book and he stole the material in this book, Wormwood, Understanding How It Is Currently Impacting Earth. Only stolen copyright righted material that he twists and spins and does everything in his little heart and desires to try to skate around the copyright laws, but it fails miserably. It fails miserably. And not only that, I've shown that he has no idea what he's talking about. The word that he gave that was a, that he claims is a Hebrew word is not a Hebrew word. It's a Canaanite word. It is a Canaanite word. The man is uneducated, and all he knows how to do is steal from others. He steals from others and does his best. He's a professional liar. 
That's what he is. That's what I say he is. He's a professional liar and thief who only knows how to steal from somebody else and then put a little spin on it and make people lie well enough to make people believe that he know, has some kind of intimate knowledge. The Bible tells us to study so that we may be found approved. And this is what he tries to convince people of. He steals from the people who have studied and been found approved because he's smart enough to do that. But then he feeds people a lot of jargon, what's otherwise known as BS. He adds a lot of jargon. And this is a big problem. The sheeple, his sheeple, don't have enough sense to fact check him or look it up. They just take him for his word. They have been so bamboozled by him that they take him for his word. And this is what the Bible warned about. False teachers, false prophets who are wolves in sheep's clothing. And he's laughing at them as he blows smoke up their rear ends because there's no fire in his mouth. He's only got hot air and smoke, just like Robin Bullock and Timothy Dixon. They have not been studied and been found approved, but they have enough sense to steal from somebody who has done the work, who has put in the time. But it's going to come back to bite them. It will come back to bite them. And they just don't realize it yet. They should ask Perry Stone what happened with Perry Stone when he ended up having to be committed to a mental institution, to a hospital. How the Bible speaks that, you know, ones that do this kind of stuff get turned over to a reprobate mind. And it, Perry Stone was one of the first. And he was handed over to a reprobate mind, just like Scripture speaks. Timothy Dixon's tried to call down the death angel on me a few times. And the death angel instead visited his house. Kent Christmas did the same thing. And the death angel visited his house instead. Now Timothy Dixon's daughter and mother-in-law are dead because they tried to curse me, the true prophet of God. Kent Christmas's son is now dead because he did the same thing. And Robin Bullock's daughter almost died because he was he was headed that direction. Remember, he cursed Robin Bullock, cursed my two books, and it was not long after that his daughter became who helps with the ministry. His ministry become very very ill. Timothy Dixon was telling, "Oh, everybody, pray for Robin's daughter." Wouldn't have to pray for, wouldn't have to lose these family members if y'all people wouldn't curse me what happens touch not God's anointed when you try to curse me it's going to backfire it will backfire on you every time all of you false prophets know what uh, Revelation chapter 11 talks about the fire in the mouth when you curse me it will backfire on you <laughs>